Every now and again, mysterious explosions rock Middlesboro, Kentucky and the surrounding areas, sometimes explained as earthquakes. Um, Cheryl says it sounded like a bomb went off in Speedwell, didn't feel it in Pump Springs. This was a very strange quake because normally the epicenter goes out in, in a secular motion, okay? Just like this. But people are not feeling it in that same area, and it could be that there's just a lot of bedrock that's blocking those waves. Melissa says, my husband said he heard what sounded like an explosion at 213 in New Taswell by the high school. Uh, people coming through the tunnel. That is not a good place to feel an earthquake in the tunnel. So I can imagine that's pretty scary. The last explosion was blamed on fireworks, something a lot of folks didn't believe. Most of these people have been surrounded by coal mines and blasting all their life. This last explosion was described as a percussion blast that made people sick to their stomachs. One woman's mother called her crying. It made me realize it was time I talk about a dark secret I think lies under Cumberland Mountain, a secret for which people have been willing to kill to keep. In February of 2015, I asked the world this question. Is the Cumberland Gap Tunnel part of a secret underground military installation? At the time, I was ignorant of the CIA and how they operated. I was ignorant of Iran-Contra, the funding of foreign wars via drugs for arms trafficking. All I knew was the perfect storm at my home in Knoxville, Tennessee, had me moving to a 100-year-old textile mill on the east side of this Kentucky town, plunked down in the heart of a not-quite-yet 300-year-old meteor crater. If I threw a rock out my upstairs window, I could almost hit Cumberland Gap. It was so close. I began using the tunnel a lot. The more I used it, the less my brain could reconcile its oppressive injection into Cumberland Mountain. Almost a $300 million monster of engineering for what was a pretty rural, quiet part of Kentucky. It was odd. It was out of place. It was a subconscious calculation in my brain that simply deduced, something's not right here. Inexplicably drawn to Cumberland Mountain's secrets, I began years of study, research, records requests, and interviews that not only support the idea there is more going on at the Gap and its cave systems than meets the eye, but I've been forced to face the question that's haunted the back of my mind for a couple of years now. Is this one of the trails to the octopus Danny Casolaro had been pursuing when he was suicided on August 10, 1991? To my knowledge, there had never really been any serious talk about an underground base or facility at Cumberland Gap, at least not in recent times. But back in the 1800s, Cudjoe's Cave and its surrounding cave system were used for saltpeter mining for the production of gunpowder. With so much being mined there, it was called Saltpeter Cave at one time. The caverns were also used for military storage and a hospital during the Civil War. So Cumberland Mountain, which is essentially hollow, was already a strategic military site for our young country. My first hint something mysterious might be under that mountain was when I first came across the National Defense Act of 1916, part of which authorized the president to have investigated the best and cheapest way to make nitrates for munitions and to locate the best place in the country to do that. The Nitrate Supply Committee recommended that the construction of the initial plant be started at once, at some point to be selected by the War Department in Southwest Virginia or adjoining territory in West Virginia, reasonably near to the sulfur, sulfuric acid, and coal supplies of that region. Cudjoe's Cave and the Gap Cave System at the tip of Southwest Virginia was the perfect place for the nitrate fertilizer plant. Saltpeter, or niter, 
the raw material for making gunpowder and explosives, was already in abundance in the underground cave system. The mountain was made of high quality limestone, which is a catalyst for making more nitre, and a hydroelectric dam had already been established there by a local college years before. Hydroelectric dams are crucial to large-scale fertilizer production, and Cumberland Gap represented everything the War Department was looking for in a nitrate production facility. The members of the Nitrate Supply Committee either feigned surprise when Sheffield, Alabama was publicly chosen for the location of the new nitrate plant, or they were genuinely shocked. They wrote, why the president selected the site at Sheffield, contrary to all reports and recommendations, is not known. The nitrate supply committee was right. Southwest Virginia was the logical place for fertilizer production for the War Department. Here was a site they could keep secret. The Virginia Department of Mines, Minerals, and Energy states the deep scattered saltpeter caves were valued by the Confederate military as they proved to be an elusive target for enemy forces, a truth that endures to this day, and especially in 1916. The War Department didn't keep the nitrate plant at Sheffield secret. It diverted attention away from the deep underground caverns at Cumberland Gap. Caverns that offered a ready-made, hardened facility tucked away from prying eyes. A facility located in a hollow mountain where climate, vegetation, and geology give it the greatest concentration of saltpeter cave deposits in North America and the ability to regenerate an infinite amount more. President Wilson visited Lincoln Memorial University in 1918 under the guise of receiving an honorary law degree. Lincoln Memorial University sits right at the foot of where the secret facility would be established. Was the president there for the law degree or a tour of the recently completed secret munitions factory deep in Cumberland Mountain? I don't think the timing and location of the president's visit is a coincidence. In 1916, the same year the president said a site must be chosen for fertilizer production, the road over Cumberland Gap was built. Another thing that gnaws at me has to do with the acquisition of land for Cumberland Gap National Park in 1940. It's right after the start of World War II, and the acquisition was only authorized by Congress after language was omitted, calling it a recreational area. The park would not be open to the public until 15 years later. Weird. By the end of the Second World War, the U.S. would have discovered another added benefit of their secret fertilizer factory a byproduct called deuterium. Also known as heavy water, deuterium, while not radioactive, is a critical component for creating weapons-grade plutonium. To be blunt, the way it looked, the secret under Cumberland Mountain was ratcheting up to be one heck of a bomb-making facility. Talk began of building the Cumberland Gap Tunnel in 66. But it wasn't until the mid-80s construction of the tunnel began. What was the relationship between the massive tunnel and the secret facility I believe was already located deep within the caverns under the mountain? The tunnel would bring a massive electrical grid upgrade, more communications, more technology, and easier access. The tunnel also led to the removal of the road over Cumberland Gap, virtually ending public access to the Gap Cave system except for a few limited tours a year, further fortifying the facility against any unwanted intrusions. And they did it without raising any eyebrows.
Not one to believe in coincidences, I was certain the discovery of Parsons Brinkerhoff as the engineering consultant for the tunnel project was further proof there was more under the mountain than we were aware. In the publication, Tunneling to the Future, the company says, During the Cold War, Parsons Brinkerhoff pioneered methods for the creation of large underground spaces for military fortresses. They designed Raven Rock, a hardened underground defense facility in the Catoctin Mountains in Pennsylvania, and even more impressively, NORAD, located in an underground cavern deep within Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado. Now add the Cumberland Gap Tunnel to that list, keeping in mind that the Gap Cave system had already been a strategic military stronghold in the past due to its abundant supply of saltpeter and elusive location, and the War Department's Nitrate Supply Committee in 1916 had also recommended a plant be built in that area, even though that recommendation had been publicly dismissed. Part of the military-industrial complex, Parsons Brinkerhoff would lie to the public and even their own families to cover up the true nature of their projects. They confessed in the historical publication Parsons Brinkerhoff through the years 1885 to 2012, that Raven Rock, undertaken in 1948, was under very tight security clearance. We did not even tell our families what we were doing. Once construction started and tunnel muck had to be deposited outside, it was obvious something very important was underway. The fiction that it was a mining operation could not be very long maintained. So, the public has been lied to before about the true nature of tunnel projects through the U.S. mountains, and I continued to find evidence supporting the theory the true purpose of the Cumberland Gap Tunnel was also concealed. For instance, Parson Brinkerhoff's lead engineer at NORAD was Thomas Kusel. Kusel was also their lead engineer at Cumberland Gap Tunnel. S.A. Healy, the subcontractor at Raven Rock, was also the subcontractor at Cumberland Gap Tunnel. You might find it interesting S.A. Healy was also awarded the contract to build the Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory a particle accelerator experiment that sends a beam of neutrines underground from the Fermi lab to detection equipment 450 miles away in a ballroom-sized cavern at a former iron mine that is now, get this, a state park. I'm not saying there is a subatomic particle accelerator underneath Cumberland Gap National Park, I'm just saying, S.A. Healy, the subcontractor on the Cumberland Gap Tunnel, has built underground structures for the government before, and under a state park at that. More coincidence for a girl that doesn't believe in coincidences. Loda Gianni, one of the largest construction firms in Italy, with U.S. headquarters near Washington, D.C., is shown as being involved in the Cumberland Gap Tunnel project with S.A. Healy as a joint venture. Strongly rumored to have mafia links, Lodigiani's vice president was locked up in Milan during an investigation into hundreds of millions being paid to political figures in exchange for lucrative government contracts. This was in 1992 the same time Lodigiani is involved in the Cumberland Gap Tunnel. However, it doesn't appear any investigations into this company were initiated on U.S. soil. Right before Lodigiani became involved at Cumberland Gap, they constructed an ammunition pier for the Aral Naval Weapons Station in New Jersey. And going back to Parsons Brinkerhoff, even though they were the consulting engineer over the entire tunnel project, 
I could find no records of payments made to them in all the FOIA documents I received. If there is no documentation of payment, from what budget were they paid? And although not involved in the building of Cumberland Gap Tunnel itself, I feel I should mention Mr. Wilder, cave expert and volunteer with the Cave Research Foundation involved in extensively surveying and mapping the Gap Cave system since 2003. At the time, Mr. Wilder worked for Pro2Serve, a tech and engineering firm dedicated to providing critical infrastructure engineering services in support of our nation's security. Some of the backgrounds of Pro2Serve's board of directors include former Air Force Space Command, former UT Battelle, former president of Lockheed Martin Energy Systems, former National Nuclear Security Administration, former Chief Information Officer for the CIA. Tell me something, do you think any of them had any interest at all in their colleagues' rigorous surveying of the Gap Cave system? This is all circumstantial evidence. I have no whistleblower accounts. I have no smoking gun. But I do have the anecdotal stories of the people that live here. People like the lady at the hair salon, who tells how, when she was a little girl, she and a friend slipped through the cracks and crevices and stalagmites and stalactites at Kudju's Cave to go swimming in a cool cave pool, and finding military crates and boxes that, years after hearing the story, I now realize were most likely arms and munitions from the secret facility within. And here are these two little girls crawling all over them like their personal playground. There's the man from Arthur, Tennessee, who stood out on his porch late one summer night and watched military trucks haul what he described as wooden coffins down Powell Valley. Again, several years later, after hearing this story, I finally put two and two together that those weren't wooden coffins. They were weapons from the facility under the mountain. Farmer tells how a tornado hit Middlesboro with no weather in sight. He is watching the weather on the early evening news when out of nowhere, on a clear weather map, a bright red dot blows up out of nowhere over Middlesboro. No warning, no logical explanation. Was it weather manipulation? There were several reports of a military plane flying over the Middlesboro crater before the sudden tornado struck. Then a guest author to my blog wrote how in the 1940s, his daddy and a couple of his buddies went exploring deep in Kajo's cave, making their way through the rough terrain, narrow passages, small openings and mud and water traveling for nearly half the night before discovering a huge room much larger than anything they could have imagined. It was so big, his daddy said you could fly a small plane around inside. A ready-made fortress, just right for someone like Parsons Brinkerhoff to develop into a state-of-the-art munitions and weapons facility, and God knows what else. But it was one of the first stories I heard when moving to the area, well before I knew of the bluegrass conspiracy, Danny Casolero, or the octopus, that made sense only recently, erasing any doubt I might be mistaken about a bomb-making facility under that mountain. That was the story about the silver mine near Arthur, something I got to see firsthand and have the pictures to prove it. My friend's daddy, who would eventually own the property with the mine entrance years later, knew an old neighbor who had worked the mine. He said the man told him a seam of silver grew an inch every foot and that the mine went back under the mountain and ran for miles as far as commercial bank in Harrogate at least. The daddy said this would have been the 1930s. 
The daddy lived close to the mine at the time and was able to watch the miners come and go from the entrance. He said whatever material they were taking out of the mine was carried carefully in wooden boxes and loaded in covered trucks that never left the property before midnight. One night, the mysterious miners packed up all of their stuff and left, never to return. I was excited when I first heard the story. I immediately thought, wow, Jonathan Swift's lost silver mine. But after all my research, the other stories I've heard and putting two and two together, I realized it was more likely what they were carrying out so gingerly in wooden boxes were explosives made underground in President Wilson's secret facility. Today, you can only venture around 60 feet or so into the mine shaft before you're stopped by a flooded passageway. You can imagine how badly I want to see more. Not often, but every once in a while, I have smelled the overpowering odor of ammonia when exiting the tunnels. My friends have noticed it too. I know I could be completely off base with all of this. It's possible there's nothing there. But if I am right, I have a deep-seated fear this underground facility is not under any kind of regulatory oversight. I'm starting to believe this secret under Cumberland Mountain and the high-level drugs and weapons trafficking in Southeast Kentucky and Northeast Tennessee are different sides of the same coin. You can bet I'll have more on that later. I love my country, so I wrestle daily with the question, am I doing the right thing by exposing the Cumberland Gap conspiracy? If secret arms production, weapons trafficking, drug trafficking, money laundering, cold-blooded murder, the sending of innocent people to lifetimes in prison, if these things truly fall under the protection and screen of national security, is it really the duty of the press or someone like me to stay silent?